Hello and welcome to our trip aboard the beautiful Regent Seven Seas Explorer and transiting the Panama Canal. Once again, this is during the age of COVID and we're going to explore just a bit about how Regent handles the experience in the age of the pandemic. This is part one of four and we will talk about the itinerary, each stop along the way, and finishing with, in part four, the Regent Seven Seas Explorer. Of course, traveling during the age of COVID will require some flexibility as far as itinerary. Before we even got started, we found that the Grand Caymans had canceled Georgetown on the itinerary, but with Georgetown out, Key West was in. While underway, we found out that Cartagena, Colombia would become a fuel stop only, Nicaragua was out, and another sea day was in, on day three, we found out that Guatemala was out, Puerto Chiapas, Mexico was now in. So here is what came to be our final itinerary. But before we actually go aboard the Seven Seas Explorer, a sad, sad story. Well, as luck would have it, we were off to a very bad start. American Airlines lost our luggage on a direct flight. Yes, all of it. We had made a sort of typical rookie mistake and checked all of our luggage. Well, it never showed up in Miami. So when it became obvious that we were not going to get our luggage, we made a big shopping trip to a local Macy's to buy something, just anything. So later that afternoon, we arrived at the ship, sans luggage, and in a blue funk. But we made a decision before boarding to get the funk out of our face and get on with our trip. This was our first time sailing from the Port of Miami. So just sit back and enjoy the sail away with us. So with the sail away out of the way, we decided that our first course of action should be to have a little dinner. Dinner tonight would be at Settimari, which is Regent's Italian restaurant. That switches over from La Veranda, which is the main breakfast and lunch buffet venue, to a Italian eatery in the evenings. Dinner was wonderful, from the appetizers to the entrees. Branzini for her and a nice veal scallopini for me. And a nice selection of desserts to cap the evening off. Perfect ending to a Italian meal, of course, was a small glass of limoncello. Following our meal, we continued to explore the ship from the Grand Atrium. 
to the pool deck. Before returning to our room and the very few pieces of clothing we had gathered and calling it an evening. Our first stop was Key West, Florida. Key West, if you have not been there, is a decidedly quirky and kind of interesting town in the southernmost point of the United States. Greeted at the dock by someone who may or may not have been playing the steel drums to accompany music, uh, they were everywhere. We grabbed a good overlook of Key West before grabbing some breakfast and heading out on our shore excursion. After breakfast, we joined our first excursion, which was the conch train. The world famous conch train is a small motorized train that travels around Key West. Well, I'm always located here, though. It was moved over here to higher ground in 1847 after the The driver of the conch train kept up a steady dialogue, telling us all about Key West characters, history, and the architecture. I pointed out because he has so much rust on this road that every time I drive by, I have to look at the One of the more interesting characters that lived and worked in Key West for many years was Ernest Hemingway. Here is a shot of the marker that commemorates Key West as being the southernmost point in the continental United States. Our second excursion of the day was a trip aboard a glass bottom boat to view the barrier reef just outside of Key West. That excursion took us by Seven Seas Explorer, giving us a great view of the ship while docked. The ride itself was a good 40 minutes out to the reef and 40 minutes back. The reef itself stretches about 360 linear miles and is the third largest barrier reef in the world. I know everybody knows where the largest one is. That's the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. The Great Barrier Reef is 1,430 miles in length. It is a monster. Uh, you can see the Great Barrier Reef from outer space. The second one... After a time on the reef, it was time to return to Key West, Florida. After returning to Key West, it was time for a bit of a walkabout. Many of the older buildings in Key West, both public and private, have been repurposed into shopping centers. Everywhere you go, you still hear some of that steel band music, which while not endemic to Key West, is certainly pervasive throughout the town. After returning to the Explorer, it was time for a little pool action. Later on, we visited the observation lounge for a before dinner drink. After dressing up as much as we could,
dinner tonight would be in the main dining room, the compass rose. My wife started with an avocado and crab dish, while I started with some pasta. My entree was a decadent, slow braised pork belly with an equally decadent slab of seared foie gras on the side, while her entree was duck a l'orange. Dessert was a plate of petit fours, while she opted for a souffle. <laughs> Here she is enjoying her souffle in one of the dinner dresses purchased from the Regent Boutiques. What you can't see is that she still has her tennis shoes on because those were the only shoes we had available because of our loss of the luggage. Showtime tonight in the Constellation Theater featured the Regent Seven Seas singers and dancers. And while it was a fabulous show, I can't bring you any of it because Regent has a strict policy of not recording during the shows. The next two days were days at sea en route to Cartagena, Colombia. It was here that we found out that Cartagena would just be a fuel stop. And so now seems to be a good time to tell you about breakfast and lunch dining on the Explorer. The main lunch and breakfast venue is La Veranda on deck 11. La Veranda is a buffet style dining venue that features everything you could possibly want for breakfast and more and featured my idea of a healthy breakfast versus her idea of a healthy breakfast. Other breakfast venues include the Pool Grill for a continental style breakfast and the Compass Rose for a sit down, order what you want type breakfast. For lunch, there were several options. First and foremost, again, is La Veranda, which featured a different lineup every afternoon, including different meats at the carving station and different theme days. We found the food here very fresh varied and well done for a buffet. There was always a nice variety of desserts to go with your lunch. Other dining venues included the pool grill, which was all about burgers, sandwiches, wings, casual dining. We found the food there be tasty and overall very good. The pool grill was also the pizza venue. We found the pizza, while fresh, somewhat bland. The pool grill also had theme days, such as exotic fruit day, seafood extravaganza, and even Tex-Mex right around the corner, but still at the pool grill, was the ice cream shop. Other lunch venues included Chartreuse and Prime 7 on certain days. Compass Rose was available every day for lunch as well. Visual dress situation shipwide. So sea days. What to do, what to do. Well, there was plenty to do. 
Here's an example of typical activities for the day. It included everything from line dancing lessons to the shows, to trivia, to bingo, you name it, it was available to keep you busy. Dinner tonight was at Prime 7, one of the specialty restaurants on board the Explorer. Prime 7 is very elegant in an old style steakhouse way and features things like a scallop setting atop a hunk of pork belly, a delicious bone-in ribeye, a few well-done veggies, and chops and seafood for those that can't handle the beef. Dessert includes choices like a nice key lime pie and a 14-layer chocolate cake. Showtime tonight was another wonderful presentation by the cast and crew called World Rhythms. This unfortunately would be the last full cast presentation due to some of them coming down with COVID. Another Day at Sea brought us more of the same with the addition of afternoon tea. Today was Cupcake Day and they would vary the theme and the musical entertainment as the days rolled by. Tonight was once again dinner at the Compass Rose, the main dining room. Showtime tonight was the comedy of Brad Upton. Be sure to check out some of Brad's posts to YouTube. The next morning we stopped in Cartagena, Colombia. As mentioned earlier, Cartagena, which was to be a shore excursion sort of day, turned into just a fuel stop due to Colombia blocking entry because of COVID concerns. So after a brief interlude setting at the dock, it was Bye Bye Columbia. Today at afternoon tea, we had Flambe Day was kind of interesting since there was no flambe, but it was still good. Dressing for dinner, our routine now included a regular stop at the observation lounge for drinks and conversation before dinner. And dinner tonight was back at the Italian restaurant, Sette Mare. So dinner tonight was all about a seafood stew and a perfectly cooked veal chop. After dinner was a stop in the Explorer Lounge to visit with Alina and Dennis, the natural duo. Showtime tonight was the entertaining and talented Linda Gentile, pianist extraordinaire. Thank you for checking out part one of our series aboard the spectacular Seven Seas Explorer through the canal. Check out our website for more. And if you have any interest in audio and home theater technology, check out our sister site at Tom's Tech Muse on YouTube. Please check out the other videos in this series and let us know how we're doing.